So now that I have a flattened tip, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some things that I want to be applied to the entire image, right? Um, uh, you really can only do this with a flattened TIFF, uh, apply these techniques to the entire image, because the layered working file, uh, you're required to be selecting a layer before you're editing a layer, which makes it impossible for you to apply techniques that will be applied to the entire image, meaning the building and the sky and the levels are just right. Uh, so, um, so having a flattened image before you do some of these things is kind of important. Um, so uh, I'm going to uh, take my flattened TIFF here, uh, and I'm going to first apply an unsharp mask, uh, just to sharpen it a little, right? The original photograph itself was a little, uh, a little soft, right? So I'm going to go to Filter, and uh, I'm actually going to go to the Sharpen pull-down menu to sharpen this image, and then I'm going to select the option that sounds like the oxymoron, right? <laughs> I'm going to apply an unsharp mask to sharpen the image. Uh, it's actually a, a really smart option here. It allows you a lot of control over sharpening the image and doing it in a way that is not over-sharpening. Now, by default, I want you to notice that right now this image um, is being over-sharpened, right? Uh, I'm getting a lot of like vibration or weird highlighty things going on around these windows here. Um, uh, I'm noticing there's like a grainy tone uh, to my grays and there's like this weird highlighty, vibrate-ish um, edge to everything. So uh, that means, that's a visual clue for me that I have over-sharpened this, right? Uh, I really don't want Grandma to see that it's been sharpened. I just want it to be sharper. So I'm gonna take the amount down um, by the way, there is a little preview window here in your Unsharp Mask uh, uh, filter adjustment box here. Uh, and there's a little preview button here. So if that preview button is selected as you're applying these settings to your Unsharp Mask, you should see your image um, preview what the sharpening is going to look like before you click OK. So pay attention to that. I'm actually going to take the pixel radius down a little bit too because I feel like that's also contributing uh, to this uh, Unsharp Mask. Um, being a little over sharp, so uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with these settings a little bit, right? Uh, maybe just a one pixel sharpness, uh, maybe um, around 100%. Notice if I take this way high uh, or way up, and I increase the pixels way up. This is this is a great example of what happens when you over sharpen an image, right? Uh, it looks awful. It looks like a really bad old school photocopy. So uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take that pixel radius back down again. You'll notice it still looks over sharp because my amount is way too high. Uh, I'm gonna bring that down too. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe something around like 110-ish. Let me see if that ends up being too much. No, it looks pretty good, right? And I'm going to click OK. Now, before I move on to a next step, I'm going I'm to check to make sure that this uh, actually made an improvement and didn't over-sharpen. I'm going to go to Edit and Undo That. Ah, that's much softer. You see how soft that is? And then I'm going to redo it so you can see the actor. Um, so I think that's good. I think it's significantly sharper. Uh, the entire image that includes the clouds and everything in the image, uh, it's not just sharpening a layer, it's sharpening the entire image together. Um, the next thing uh, I'd like to show you after applying an unsharp mask to the entire flattened image um, is that there are some cool, fun tools in Photoshop that allow you to fix levels of gray just within certain areas. Um, so for instance, if I look at the front of this building and if I feel like these windows, just the windows on the front of this building are too light or too dark, um, I can actually use a tool in Photoshop. Um, that's really not there. It's under here. Uh, I can use the Dodge tool in Photoshop. Uh, the Dodge tool, by the way, will lighten Yes, lighten areas, but you can choose whether you want it to lighten only highlights, only midtones, and only shadows. So if I look at those windows, uh, they kind of look like shadows. They're on the darker end of these pixel ranges. So I'm going to click shadows and watch what happens when I go over here, right? Oh, actually, it is lightening just the shadows in those windows and nothing else. I kind of like this. It's like I've done this before, but notice it's not affecting the midtones. It is only affecting the shadows, the shadows, the darkest, darkest parts of those windows. Uh, if I hit undo, you can see that's what it looked like before. Um, uh, so if I wanted to lighten the midtones of those windows, right, I'm going to go through here and lighten the midtones. Uh, you should see that all of the gray areas that are in the mid-range grays uh, are getting lighter uh, without it affecting the darkest parts and without it affecting the lightest parts. Uh, kind of hard to see while you're doing it, so I'm going to hit undo so you can see the effect that it had had. Um, I'm actually going to try and do the opposite here. Uh, I'm actually going to use the burn tool, which darkens. Uh, by the way, these tools work like brushes, so you need to have uh, the right brush size and the right brush softness that you prefer. Um, what the burn tool will do is that it will darken either your shadows, your midtones, or your highlights. So let's see what happens if we use the burn tool on these windows. Woo! That's burning like really too much, yeah? I definitely don't want the windows on the sunny side of the building to be black when nothing else in this image except for the darkest area of my trees is black. But I can limit the exposure too. 
So let's say I do want those windows darker, but only a little darker. I'm going to reduce the exposure to like 10%. By the way, these are dark room terms. And I'm going to darken ever so slightly these windows, right? I'm just doing three little sweeps here so that the windows on the front of the building are darker. And I can do the same thing here, right? This little strip right here, if I want the shadows of that little strip to be a little bit darker, I can do that too. This will modify only the shadows. I'm only darkening the shadows. If I feel like this is still a little too light, I can go back over it again and modify those shadows. Um, so uh, I did several sweeps of this. Uh, clicking undo will only take me back one step at a time. So if I want to, I can bring up my history panel. My history panel has recorded all that burning for me each step at a time. If I go all the way back to the beginning, you'll see what it looked like uh, actually right after my unsharp mask and then what it looked like after I just slightly burned the shadows of those. Uh, careful with burning and dodging, by the way. You don't want things to look smudgy or brushy. Uh, make small changes, lower that exposure, make small changes at a time. Um, uh, don't make really big drastic changes that, uh, that look either over or underexposed. Again, these are uh, darkroom techniques and terminology uh, that we would use in a darkroom, burning and dodging. Uh, uh, as well as lightening shadows, midtones, and highlights, uh, and exposing, right? Exposing those windows to more light, theoretically speaking, uh, in order to get them darker, or dodging or preventing light from hitting those areas, aka dodge. Um, so, uh, so I've done just a tad bit, right? You could do that as well on the trees, for instance, if you want the highlights on the trees to be a little lighter here, right? Just the highlights, a little lighter. You can lighten the highlights on those trees. I'm going to hit undo so you can see that it's just the highlights that were affected by that change. So maybe just the highlights here, right? Maybe just the highlights here. Maybe just the highlights over here in these trees, right? Um, this way here, making small changes, uh, improving the uh, visibility or the legibility uh, of those details uh, within the trees just by doing some slight dodging and burning. Um, so uh, some other things. Uh, I like to play around with... Um, uh, with a depth of field. Uh, this is another uh, old school uh, terminology for those of us who are used to using film cameras back in the day, um, uh, or any camera that has uh, a timed exposure and a lens that allows you to open and close the aperture of that lens. Uh, the rule of thumb is this, the more open uh, that aperture is on your camera, uh, the more things in the distance, the faster the, faster the uh, photograph will be taken, and the blurrier things that are really close or really far away will appear uh, on the uh, negative or on later on on the print that you make from that negative. So uh, so I like to play around with a uh, what I call a false depth of field, making it look like there's more depth in the image by using my blur tool, oh my god, using my blur tool in Photoshop to blur areas that are really far away or very close and leaving those things that are meant to be the focal point in the center Yes, of that depth. In this case, the building and maybe the trees that are um, uh, that are in the same at the same distance from me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to use this blur tool, and that works, by the way, like a brush as well. Uh, and you can set the strength of the blur, um, uh, just like you can set the exposure, right, for your uh, for your um, burn tool and your dodge tool. You can also set a strength for your blur. Uh, so I'm going to pretend like these treetops here or these trees. Are further away than the building yeah further away and I'm gonna blur them right I'm gonna blur them pretty significantly here right now look at the crispness of the building and the blur of those trees and it makes those trees look like they're even further away yeah you guys with me on that uh, I'm gonna do the same thing for this building that is peeking up out of the top here right if I want to I can even create a selection area to protect the crisp edge of my building here and to ensure that my building in the foreground is not getting blurred along the edge as I am blurring this building in the background. Remember, making a selection protects things that are outside of that selection. So I'm going to blur that building back there. Uh, the cool thing is, is that the, uh, the clouds uh, aren't too affected by this blurring or this blurring effect in the areas where they're getting a little blurred because clouds tend to be a little blurry and soft anyhow. So I'm going to command D to deselect and you'll see now that building looks like it's further away. Yeah, if I want to, I can blur it even more. And so I want to do possibly the same with these things here as well. Uh, make these buildings in the background or look further away um, than other things in the image by creating a false depth of field. Yes. Um, by blurring those things that are further away in the image. Now, I don't want to blur these trees here or these trees here because they're at the same distance away from me as 
the building that I want to stay sharp in the focal point of the image. So uh, notice that this building back here looks further away now uh, because it's blurrier. This building looks blurrier. This tree here, uh, I can make this tree even blurrier to make sure that it stays far away. Far away. This is a happy little tree, but it's far away. That's Bob Ross in there. Happy little tree, happy little, happy little building, happy little tree. All right, and I want to do the same thing for stuff that is up close as well. So I'm going to blur those things that are up close. You know what? While I'm at it, I'm going to increase my um, blur amount here so I can be blurring more at once. I won't have to go over it quite as much. I'm going to make sure that I keep the parts of the road, yeah, that are at the same distance as the building. I'm going to make sure that those things don't get blurred. Right? But those things that are super close to me or should be super blurred. Those things that are super far away should be also super blurred. So here we go. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Doesn't that make it look like the building? The building is the only thing in focus when this photograph was taken. Boy, that really, that kind of stuff really fools grandma, you guys. Yeah, you with me on that? Grandma's going to be like, wow, of course this, everything was like this when this photo was taken. Yeah? How else could those things be out of focus? <laughs> <laughs> tricky, 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 right? All right, so uh, if you want, you can go through and make sure things are blurred to your satisfaction. So yes, fake depth of field, kind of fun, right? Uh, there's one more change I want to make to this image or show you that you can make to this image, uh, and that is to apply a vignette technique. Uh, what a vignette is, is uh, a blurry edge uh, to a photograph or to um, an art piece that you create. Um, usually it's uh, darker, but there are such things as lighter vignettes. Most of the time, vignettes are darker. Uh, so I'm actually going to grab just a traditional brush here. Uh, I'm going to use the color black, um, but I'm going to lighten the opacity of that so that I'm not making huge changes. And I'm going to go with a nice, big, soft brush, even bigger than that. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to go along the edge, only the edge of this image with this big, soft, opaque brush. Notice because it's opaque each time I pass along the edge, it does not create this really dark black spray. Instead, it's just a slightly darker color. Yeah, and I can do it a few times until the edge is the darkness that I'm after for my vignette. I don't want it to be overly vignetted. I don't want big, heavy, dark edges. Um, just some nice, subtle, dark edges. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and smooth, consistency. And notice I'm also keeping my brush um, mostly off of my canvas and just using the very soft blurry edge of my brush to apply this vignette technique to my edges. Pretty cool, right? So I have a vignette which also, whoops, clicked in the wrong spot there. So this vignette also uh, modifies the focus of this image to uh, to the building itself and to the location and the technique. So, uh, so I just wanted to show you a couple of other things. If you like what you've done, save it. Uh, if you don't like what you've done, if you're like, oh, this vignette looks awful, you know, use your history panel. You know, go back in time, <laughs> right? Maybe you don't like how dark that vignette. Maybe you didn't like the vignette at all. Uh, use your history panel to go back. I'm actually removing my vignette. Uh, I think it did get a little too dark there after a while. I probably want to make it more subtle if I was going to add a vignette to this. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's it. That's, that's, those were the things I wanted to show you. So um, yeah, uh, pay close attention in your Canvas course uh, for next steps, right? You are going to be uploading to Canvas uh, two things for project one. You're going to be uploading a folder uh, to the assignment area uh, that contains, it's going to be a zipped folder, and that folder is going to contain three files. One file is going to be your untouched scan. The next file is going to be your layered file. And then the third file is going to be your flattened final TIFF, the one that you're going to use to place uh, into your newsletter later on. Uh, and uh, the second part of your submission for project one is going to be, um, uh, is going to be uploading a, a PDF presentation of your before and after image along with a video. Oh my gosh, video um, of you uh, talking about it. We have a script for you. It's included in your project one folder, what you need to talk about in your video for your presentation. Uh, and then in that presentation area, after uploading your final before and after PDF, you're also going to be uh, uploading your video and then commenting on two of your classmates' uh, post uh, presentations. So um, good luck and uh, I'll see, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have done for project one uh, in Canvas.